Good afternoon. Uh, there was a lot of positives to take away. Uh, we moved the football. We scored points. Um, obviously, you have to protect the ball and play smart football because that's what wins. Um, and you go from there. You take one week at a time. You watch the film. You learn from it. Uh, learn that we still have a really good football team and uh, just time to put it together. Yeah, no doubt. There's definitely a balance of uh, being aggressive, but also being situationally aware. And um, you're always trying to find that balance. Um, every play is its own. One play does not affect the next. So you always keep that in mind and just execute the play that's called. Nick, what did you see on film on the, the sweep and the under pass? And how did that kind of play out? Over yeah, um, I would have liked to use a different cadence. Um, and then just I just have to push harder and further and get the first down. Um, hate the game and like what a what a way to like not succeed. Um, but that's the game that we play. Um, so it's past us now. Um, got an extra day to prepare this week, going over third downs already. Um, so we're excited for this week for sure as well. Was that the first time you ever did that in a, in a live game? That sort of shell style sweep? Yes, it is. Um, but to me, whether there's a shove or there's not a shove, not too much different. Uh, you just got to stay low, push forward, and um, yeah. On the, on the cadence, are you saying it differently when it's in the first play to the second play? Is it a different one altogether? Or? Yeah, I think so. I mean, we have so many different cadences, and uh, the ability to mix up cadence and use it as a tool um, throughout the entire game um, is definitely a way to create an advantage. Um, so I think we'll continue to use cadence to uh, create an advantage uh, for our offense. Is that, is that your option? No, we have freedom, and um, it's the quarterback's job to create an advantage for the offense to use use cadence. I think every play is its own. Um, obviously, it's a trendy play this year um, that creates a lot of talk and buzz. Um, but we're just focused on. Whatever the situation is, whatever the play is called, got to execute it, and that's all that really matters. He's awesome. I love Ty. Uh, even like that first Seahawks game uh, when he got a lot of action, um, you can, he's got juice, and um, that's what you want from a running back. He's got juice. Um, he loves football. He works really hard at it. And uh, to see him take advantage of his opportunities are awesome. Um, and I'm really not surprised that he's uh, playing well. What were some takeaways from the scene? <laughs> um, they were excited. They had a great day. Um, and they were sad that we lost, just like the rest of us. Nick, what do you see in the Lions defense? Yeah, they're a good group. Um, they're aggressive. They're active. Um, Going to get multiple looks, um, different coverages. And um, there's multiple ways they could play us. So just got to see how they're playing us and uh, take one play at a time. Nick, how much communication have you had with, with Kurt just in mm -hmm. the, lead, the lead up to this week, last week? Like, how involved has he been? Uh, yeah, I'd say a pretty good amount. Um, we have a great relationship. Thankful for um, all that Kirk has been for this team and for me since I've been here. Um, and yeah, we talk a good bit, talk about situations that play out through the game. Um, talk about what plays look good on third down this week. Um, so all sorts of stuff. Uh, he loves football. He loves talking football. He loves strategy. Um, and so he's been a great resource. Nick, how do you balance the, the mindset of being willing to let him rip and not, not having that expectation? Yeah, I think it's just uh, one play at a time. Just got to focus. You got to execute. Um, know what your job is and do it to the best of your ability. And I feel like I did a good job of that. Uh, versus Cincinnati, but obviously just got to eliminate the mistakes and uh, be a really good quarterback and collectively be a really good unit. Just stay efficient and protect the ball. I wouldn't necessarily say take chances compared to just do it, do what you're coached. You know, stick to what you're coached, stick to the fundamentals, uh, stick to quick decision making, decision making and accurate throws. Um, that what's 
that's what makes a great quarterback, and uh, that's what I'm going to stick to. Yeah, I would say so. Every week is a new week. Um, same routine. I, I love my routine that I had when I was the backup, and it hasn't really changed much um, since I've become the starter. Uh, but definitely, the more you're behind center, the more you're uh, making checks, seeing looks. Um, as a backup, you try to just imagine that as best you can. Um, so now to be able to see that, do it more, process it more, uh, it's definitely helped, and uh, we're excited for the week. It's all about beating the Lions. Um, playoffs are awesome, but if you don't win, then the playoffs don't matter. Um, so you got to beat the Lions. Um, and I think the guys are excited about that. Um, obviously, we got the white out at home. Uh, so there's a lot to be excited about. Um, we have a great defense. Um, move the ball on offense. Uh, we know we can do it. Now it's just putting it all together um, against an awesome uh, home crowd in the white out game. We know that Jefferson came back, but explain to Edison how he does what he does at that size. But what was your impression from playing with him in your last position? Yeah, um, I think I think it's important to realize that like people might say that he's small, but he plays bigger than he is. Um, people might say dog mentality, but if you watch him block in the run game or separate versus man um, or get 10 plus yards after the catch, uh, he's got more than whatever you think he has. And uh, I think that's been a really cool attribute to see. Um, he's been nothing but consistent since he's been here, and uh, he's a great player. The interception where you're going, you're being taken down, you're trying to just kind of wail it in there. As you look back at that, what, what do you learn from that? I mean, every NFL play is, is, is you know, different. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you're in that situation again, do you remember that? Or what did you learn from that? Uh, take the sack and kick the field goal. Um, as a quarterback, you do train to not take sacks, especially in two minute. Um, but there, you definitely have to um, flip the mindset. You already have points, so take the points and uh, just be a smart player. Yeah, I think it's, uh, is it easy? Um, no, nothing about playing quarterback in the NFL is easy, uh, but that's why we do it and that's why we love it. Um, but at the same time, just process, uh, decision making, all that stuff. Um, you got to be able to do it, and um, that's going to be successful when we do. What is it about this Friday evening session that's so valuable to you? I think just simulating, simulating the looks, simulating the plays. Uh, you get so much information during the week. Uh, you got to process it, and then just Friday's the time to sit back, relax, go through all the plays and uh, feel what it's going to feel like. And uh, that's been very useful for, for my uh, routine. Say what? Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, definitely. Yes, uh, the loud voice was needed for sure, yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Yep. How we doing, guys? Happy Wednesday. Yeah, um, you know, I think it's just, you know, it's a, it's another team, you know, and uh, we have a chance to be able to, to go out and play them this week, and uh, that'll be a lot of fun. So, um, you know, we got everything out in front of us that we've we set out to do. So, um, you know, we, we just got to control what we can control, and, um, Go out and play as hard as we can, you know. You said offense. I mean, you worked hard to stay close to the Ben Johnson there. What do you remember of your time with him? Yeah, I mean, you know, Ben was my tight ends coach for a couple of years, and I mean, he's a, he's an awesome dude. Uh, I, I loved Ben. Um, you know, being able to work with him, and um, you know, he taught he was able to teach me a lot um, while I was there. Um, he's got a good offensive mind, and um, you know, he 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 does a lot of things really well. So um, you know, he fits really well with Jared too. And, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a good challenge for our defense, but um, nothing they're not up for, you know, by any means. So uh, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun on Sunday. What are the challenges of playing with a series of different quarterbacks? What do you do differently as your playbook? Or does it just take more time to prepare during the week? 
Um, yeah, you know, I've, I've alluded to this, you know, um, previously. It's just, you know, it's one of those things. Quarterbacks, um, each of them have different things that they want um, out of their receivers, whether it's indicators or uh, timings or uh, leverages and, and stuff like that so they can see it and play in the timing of, the, the, of their drops and, um, you know, play in the timing of their protection. So um, I think it's just different things um, from each quarterback and, you know, I, it, when, when you're in the season like this, you, you, you just have communication with them and you talk to them throughout the weeks. And, um, you know, I, I, I've been with, uh, you know, I was with really three quarter, you know, three quarterbacks in four, four years last year, you know. So um, it's not something I'm, I'm not used to, um, being able to have a communication, have a conversation with, with the quarterbacks about what they want. So, um, you know, as a tight end, you you kind of in the middle of the field. They they're able to see uh, able to see leverages and stuff. So um, nothing that nothing too crazy that we have to do particularly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's cool. Um, you know, you want to be relevant in, in December, right? So. Um, and, and you want to be playing for something in December, and that's what we're doing here in, in this locker room. So, um, you know, it, it's a, it's going to be a lot of fun these next few weeks. And um, like I said, we can, can only control what we can control, and, and that's going out there and playing as hard as we can and playing our best ball. So, um, yeah, it's it's there, you know we get we get Detroit for you know this week, and then obviously in a couple of weeks, and um, just being able to see them, you know, they know what we can do, we know what they can do, and so there's there's not really many secrets. It's just who can go out there and play the best and prepare the best, and um, who can play fast and make plays? So it'll be it'll be fun. Is it hard to keep the focus on that competition when you guys? I think last year, no one had that focus on that. Uh, you know, I, I don't think so. I mean, you know, you play we, you play the season, you play the, this game week by week. Um, you know, there's so many ebbs and flows, and that's what analysts are for. You know, it's kind of figuring out where we're at and, and doing all that. I mean, we just play the game on Sundays, and like I say, you just can't take a Sunday off. You got to play, play every day, play every snap, play, and, and prepare the best you can for Sunday. Um, you know, but I think you know, a lot of it is the preparation going into the week, and you know, we don't look at Green Bay or we don't look at the next week or the next week or figure out where we are. I mean, obviously you want to know, um, so, you, so you know what we have to do. But, um, you know, you, those are things that you don't look at. There's so many ebbs and flows in this season. And so you just take it week by week and, and, and team by team. Does knowing that there's ebbs and flows like that make it easier to move past the game like last year? Because I remember you talking earlier in the year about sometimes games can just stick with you even though it's not. Yeah, I mean, sometimes games can stick with you for sure. Um, the, the, it's easier to say, uh, harder to do, obviously, um, is moving past things. But, um, you know, growing in this league and, and, and becoming older and having more years under my belt, um, you know, you just you, you have to let things go and, and you have to go back in the off season and, and, and recollect and, and understand what you could you could have done better. And, and that, but that's for the off season. you know, during the season. Um, you are who you are, and you play how you play, and you, there's things that you learn and things that you improve during the season. Um, but you know, it, it, you just got to let things go, and uh, you know, understand that you know some 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 weeks people will love you, and some peeps, weeks people will hate you, and that's just how it works. I mean, um, you, you just you go out there and play the best ball that you can every week, and um, prepare like you're going to, and you know things will come. It was awesome. Uh, I mean, you know, it was the, he averaged six to carry or something like that. I mean, that's that's awesome. Um, you know, just to see a guy like that, Ty. I mean, you know, he's 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 a Nashville guy as well. He's, he goes down there, works works out, and I see him every every once in a while in the off season. So, to to understand how hard he's worked, um, you know, obviously not just this season, but in the off season as well, and um, who he is as a person, and uh, you know, it's just incredible to see him succeed on Sundays and have the game that he had and you know we're going to definitely lean on him to to continue that the rest of the season. Yeah, I mean he's been awesome for the, for them. I mean that's um you know Sam I I I was uh my second year in the league. I went down there and and you know sat in the meeting room with him and 
um, you know, taught them some stuff. And, um, you know, it's just, it's, it's just cool to see all the Iowa guys, you know. I mean, it doesn't matter who you are or where, where you play. I mean, there's a bond there just, just being Hawks, you know. So um, it's great to see. And, uh, he, I mean, he's going to be uh, very successful in this league, and he's going to continue doing what, he's do, what he does. Yeah. What can you teach somebody in that setting? Um, I think there's a lot you can teach in, the, in a setting when you're on a whiteboard and you have tape in front of you. You know, I mean, you can you can show what you see and and how you do things. I mean, um, you know, it's it, you know it, it is cool to to be able to see, um, you know, and I've 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 been in that seat obviously before, um, you know, and with a pen in my hand. So um, to understand what guys do differently and what they see um, pre snap, post snap, um, and, and how you kind of release against man coverage and how you win against man coverage and how you win against zone coverage and finding the zones in it. And, you know, there's a lot that you can kind of see pre-snap. And then obviously, you know, this league is made of mass coverages and um, they try to disguise as much as they can. So trying to be able to decipher post-snap too, because you don't always get to see, uh, or they'll give you a man tell in the play zone. So stuff like that. I mean, there's a lot to learn in a whiteboard um, with, with film in, in, in the, in the room, so um, yeah, I mean, it, it is fun to do to be able to do that kind of stuff. Uh, not much right now. Um, you know, obviously, it's just you, you know you want to go out there and like I say, you play every Sunday um, as hard as you can, as much as you can, and you kind of look at that stuff after the season, um, you know, and, and be able to recollect. But you know, Kirk's alert, alluded to that. I mean, every year you want to go into the to the season and just be a consistent player. And, you know, every Sunday you want to be able to be that guy um, that can make plays when your number's called. And, you know, that's that's just what we strive for. So uh, that's, that's what I'm going to continue to try to strive for and uh, just be consistent throughout the year, um, you know. But uh, that's the, the numbers and stuff, that doesn't really matter to me too much right now. Um, that's, like I said, that's stuff that you look at in the offseason and recollect and, and just see where you were at. Talk about getting old. I mean, you feel old or <laughs> Yeah, right. No, I, I don't I don't feel old um, by any means. Uh, you know, I, I it's it's just fun to be able to have some you know, I've I, I came into this league as as a young player, um, I was twenty one years old, so um, to be able to, you know, kinda watch and, and see where I've come from since then and um, the knowledge of the game and, and everything has been um, it's, it's been a blast. Uh, you know, I just love this game so much. So there's a lot of things that go into it and a lot of, you know, knowledge and preparation that goes into it and, and guys that see different things and do different things. And, um, you know, to kind of be able to, you know, help uh, help younger guys and, and, you know, help them see some things that maybe they wouldn't in their first or second year and, and be able to, hey, th look for this or look for that. And that's kind of what I mean by old, <laughs> you know, but is more the knowledge of it. But no, I feel pretty good. <laughs> cool. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it.